let me appease any frustration you may have that I haven't actually filmed your request to the point of posting it with my little Epicatante Xiang Yu Gold Coast Sunkiss. I am so sorry. Once upon a time, there was a very wise lady in my life. She was my nan. And she told me as a child, long time ago, yes, don't ever get yourself in a position in life where you need and owe someone an apology. And if you abide by that little saying, you're gonna be just fine. So never owe someone an apology and everything is gonna be good and you're doing the right thing. Very wise woman, because here I am. I wanted to do your request justice. I had already filmed some footage and then I thought, no, shred that not good enough and then other things took over and still in the back of my mind I was still thinking of your request while I was doing other things how to formulate it how to set it up how to go about it and then more time went past and then I started to learn how to use a fandangle fancy gimbal and I thought I'm gonna do Joy's request justice because I I'm going to do the first time with a fancy fandangle gimbal. And I started to film with a fancy fandangle gimbal. And on top of that, that's not quite working out just yet. And I wouldn't have done your request justice. And a little more time passed and I am so sorry. And here's my Nan again. If you had just done it in a timely manner, you wouldn't owe an apology. Wise, wise woman. So here I am, old school. I'm going to try and do your request justice. And as you can tell, I am in my blooming alley because this is where I want to start. This is where the major, let's say, action happens. And I think I can do your request justice in this space. And then we'll go to other areas as I reference why I do what I do. When we just get distracted by the beautiful Lelia Perinii. Oh my goodness, she has developed a fragrance. Here, Blue Indigo is going out and the fragrance has been replaced by Lelia Perinii. Roses, very pleasant, not as strong, but super pleasant. Nice to have as a replacement. Anyway, back to the action, the point. You asked about how I group my orchids regarding light, fertilizer, not fertilizer, climate, etc. So here's what I do. First of all, I don't group my orchids according to fertilizing needs. My fertilizing needs as per orchid are individual depending on what the specific orchid needs at what time. So I have my two buckets always ready to go. The blue one is just plain RO water, sometimes with seaweed. The green one is always fertilized water and I'm sticking with 300 ppm in this case because the majority of my orchids go by 300 ppm. Now, how do I distinguish who needs what? And I don't, again, don't group. I have these two spray bottles. One always has just plain RO water from that blue handled bucket and one has just fertilized water all the time from the green handled bucket. Between the two of these spray bottles and the two buckets, I go around my collection and treat the orchids accordingly in the summer because I can spray the surface of the pot, which I always generally do with plain RO water. So when it comes to watering and fertilizing my individual pots, I have done a fertilized watering video for another viewer and I will link that. Maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't. But basically I know which pots have been done because I'm all over them every day. And 
Then there's a little nasty corner back here where I very rarely get to and I think everything is gonna be okay and that's where mistakes happen. So I try to be as best on top of the fertilizing of my orchids on an individual basis because some are in active growth, they drink a lot. And some are just doing nothing because they finished flowering. They don't drink that much and they just get RO water into the reservoir until it is empty, avoiding as best as I can the microfiber from drying out. That is summer and winter. So I'm just going to leave it at that with regards to water and fertilizing because I'll link uh, the video of what I do in the description. Your main request was how do I group my orchids for light, etc., etc. So when it comes to light, there's two things I watch out for. Can it handle direct sun? Or is it too young to handle direct sun, even though as a mature orchid, that is what it can handle? So here in my blooming alley, you can see there's a lot of dappled sunshine, shade. There's a lot of breeze in this little alley as well. Not today, thank goodness, but normally there is. And here is what I do in this part. Because I'm here a lot and I see it a lot and I can monitor the climate from indoors much better, I have highlight orchids that need the extra attention when it comes to being weak or a juvenile, an establishing seedling that needs more light, like my Leopoldii here, or something I need to keep an eye on with regards to humidity, because it was one of those that we were playing around with all season. Or as in my Labucensis here, something that is establishing itself, I need my, it to be in my line of fire visually to keep it monitored, but it also needs high light, not direct light because it's not quite there yet. Anything that needs a lot of humidity gets grouped as well. High light, not direct sun, lower to the floor, because I am fortunate I can do with the terracotta, I can be liberal with water on the floor. So they are here as well. So anything I need to keep my eye on, because I have not got the luxury of high humidity in the summer. So anything that needs a quick spray, easily accessible, stays here where I can normally fuss and look things over. And the same with my telumnias. They need high light, best to avoid direct sun. For the majority of the season, I can accommodate them on this wall because if they get direct sun, behind me or us is east. We are facing west. So they get some morning sun now because of the angle of the sun. And then that is where I need to be really careful with some of the tolumnias there on the corner. So I group my orchids according to how much light can they take without burning? How much attention do they need in order for me to remember efficiently what I need to be doing and when? And then if they are weak but need to establish themselves for higher light, or if as in this case, they are super weak and they can be contaminated by bugs. This is where I can keep an eye on them. They get high light, but I can watch them. They're segregated away from all the others and I can monitor if I see any more bugs because they're being treated constantly every day. And here you see that's damage from scale down there, but it's gone. There's nothing there. It's just that is a category I definitely, definitely keep in mind. Then I also group them according to shade needs, temperature needs, light needs, because in the summer when it's the hottest, I have this area above here for mounts 
that is not as susceptible to direct sun because of the angle of the sun being much higher in the sky. So these are perfect for me here. First of all, I can grow them pendently and directing their growth towards the source of the light, which is to our left as we look now. So that is north, that is south. That is a perfect location because their canes will always come out, then flop forward, like in a systematic pendant growing habit. And they are always in shade during the hottest months. As the angle of the sun lowers, obviously the temperatures are dropped, they will get direct sun, but only because of the angle of the sun. And I would only allow that for these guys because it is winter then, and they can take a much higher light influx based on low temperatures. So my blooming alley is part ICU, part um, pest control, and everything that kind of needs my attention. Then if I go, let's go to the top guns, for example. So here we are on the bang on east facing side of the grow areas where I have some shelves. And I call these top guns, not just because they're big, but they can take the maximum amount of heat and the maximum amount of light. So it's not just about size. That is something that is more considered in the winter, but it is about how much can they take, how established are they, and they don't need my constant helicopter orchid mom kind of treatment. And that is where I make sure that back here I only have established orchids and they are the ones that can take all the requirement I just mentioned. Heat, maximum light, and then I come around every day with my two sprayers or a jug based on is the pot empty or does it just need a flush. Either way, there's a lot of growing that goes on here. So normally back here, I am by default already just with a jug of fertilizer. But that is how I group orchids as well. How established are they? What can they take? And then in the, at night, I drop the curtain in order to re retain the heat of the terracotta down here because this gets quite hot and it gives me some residual heat for the evenings. As the fall progresses into winter, this shelf will be moved and I'll show you where it's gonna go. We are now on the west side, bang on the opposite side of where we just stood. And here I have my little extra extension terrace, which I would love to have covered from the dining room area there which is another grow space. But here, because of the angle of the sun in about four or five weeks, there will be more sun in this area right here than there currently is. First of all, the Dama de Noche, which is gorgeous and smells delicious at night, will be cut back, allowing for much more sun. Secondly, there's a lot more sun here from the minute the sun rises. And I want to take advantage of that extra light. And I am closer then to my terrace door from the dining room because every day in the winter when the sun is shining, we can have 18 degrees Celsius, 19 degrees Celsius, and they come out to play. So that rack comes over here. My Vander rack goes down this level right here because from morning until evening, this is where the sun and the light will be the strongest. Not right now, because my vandas are extremely weak. So I'm okay with them not getting a lot of light at this point in time. I'm just gonna weigh it out. When they get stronger, they go right here. As you can see here is my chao praia and the papilionante. And that is because now I don't have as much light coming from up there because of the angle of the sun. It takes longer. They are now in direct sun. The moment the sun rises, because behind me, the angle of the sun allows for this area to be flooded with sun much, much quicker. And I don't do that in the summer because it's too hot and I have no humidity. 
So these are tucked away up there in the corner because the sun comes in later during the summer and I can maintain the roots to be more wet when I spray them for a longer period of time. And my wonderful neighbor sprays all her hedge two or three times a day during the summer. And this way I get more humidity in that little corner. So there's only one thing to be said, my chow praya has never bloomed, so clearly it's not getting enough light. But having said that, I am trying to get this orchid to grow me as many roots as possible. So maybe next year I'm going to forfeit root growth as opposed to sticking her into this spot in the summer where it's going to be blindingly hot. There is no shade in this area the whole day during the summer, whereas on my east side, I get shade during the summer eventually. Right now, the east side has a lot more sun hours than this west side. So I'm not moving my top guns until I have more sun coming here from the morning sun when it rises. It actually comes here quite quickly. And until about 5 p.m., then they all go back inside if night temperatures drop below 15 degrees. So the same thing then here, how I group my orchids, these are my angrecoids. They want a lot of light, but they cannot tolerate direct sun, not even in winter in my case. And especially not now, because for me in the fall, the sun is actually more intense because the atmosphere is clearer. That's something else I take into consideration. In the summer, it's just hot, period, hot. But the atmosphere is not as clear. So the sun is a little bit more, let's say, subdued, even though it is strong, but it is now really strong because we have such a clear atmosphere. And sometimes if you're standing in the sun too long, you can feel that little sting of heat. So even in winter, in my case, my angrecoids cannot tolerate direct sun, maybe late evening, maybe. I just don't want to risk it because one day can differ. There is no breeze and boom, I've burnt the orchid. So I keep them in like a perma shade environment. And then because of the angle of the sun in summer, you saw my fancy high tech unicorn umbrella has provided a very hot spot in this corner permanently in shade. Now I have removed that umbrella because the sun never reaches that corner at all. And it's still hot enough for them to be outside. You can see where my sun angle is. And it is a bit later in the afternoon right now, but it's not gonna change much. If anything, I'm gonna get even more shade come the following months. So that is how I'm playing with spaces and corners. And this time, this year, this was the first try in this corner because I could keep it shady long enough. And then my daughter came up with a genius idea of giving me her umbrella. Oh, and I was so relieved because they need a lot of humidity. And I don't have that. I don't have that in summer. Now I'm okay. And you can see that it worked this microclimate because I have moss growing throughout the summer and I'm so happy and they've been super happy as well. I have extended root growth throughout the summer on my angrecoids. That is a first. That just doesn't happen. I don't have the humidity, but I think I have found their happy place because I'm using the back hedge here now for a humidity factor during the hot summer months. And look at where the roots are now going. I think it's fabulous. So I'm trying to consider what my orchids need, trying to find pockets of climate that I can manipulate in their favor and trying to make sure that, let's say the weak ones are constantly under my supervision based on what space I normally frequent. Let me show you the dining room as it is right now to give you another idea. So this is where it gets a bit tricky with lighting and I do apologize. And it still sounds hollow because the kids aren't in yet. I still have good balmy night temperatures. 
But this is a section where I actually put all the orchids that, again, need my constant attention, but they're not ready to have that outside. So based on the terrace door here, I have the outdoor conditions coming into this shelf area right here, which acclimatizes them to the outdoors, but in a moment's notice, I can react and shut the door if it's getting too much. We've had some extremely hot winds, and I have to be careful about that because these two are established, these two aren't. These two will go and live outside for the, for the winter, these two won't. So here I have my Phalaenopsis as well because they don't need the bright light. I don't want the leaves to burn. So now some of them are already in their place where they will live for the winter. But I'm going to pan over slowly to the left here. I hope this is slow enough. To the left here, I have the high light shelf at the moment because of look where the sun is coming in. In summer, I don't get that. So in summer, I've grouped all my complex hybrid Phalaenopsis along this shelf. As an exception, I have my Mr. City Eye here as well now because I am moving back all the orchids from this shelf, which now gets a lot of direct sun for the majority of the day, which these guys, the complex fowls, do not need. So every day since the sun started to change and drop in the sky, I've been moving my complex fowls, which were on this shade, happy as Larry, for the entire sh summer. So they were right here, right by the window, bright shade, never had a lick of sunshine. And now I have to basically in the last three weeks, inch them back daily to avoid direct sun. And only today have I actually moved the, to the other ones to the top shelf. But I do want them down here in the mornings because there's more light in this lower shelf here in the mornings than there is up on the top shelf. This is quite a dark room. And I mean, I have supplemental light, but I refuse to use it during the summer months. So yes, there's a lot more work to be done moving the orchids into position as to how much light can I give them without the sun hitting them and then moving them back. Right now, you know, it's not a fuss for me because I have time, I can do it. One day when I'm hopefully working again, I, I can accommodate with a curtain by that window and I'll just you know pull the curtain down but for the time being this is how I group things no light whatsoever needs to get established or needs my attention because it cannot take the direct influx of exterior influences weather wise until it is established but here they get sort of a taste of things to come and obviously my complex phalaenopsis they live here all year round. I don't take them outside. I made the mistake one year that I did take them outside and I missed the mark and burnt some leaves. So that's not happening again. So that is how I group according to light. I'm just gonna check now your request and see if I've covered everything. Right, even winter, let's go there. Let's go there, I almost missed that. I sort of touched upon it briefly. In winter, when my temperatures drop, they have to come inside for the night. And as I mentioned, when it's sunny, they go outside. Let me pan you over once again. And you can see the upper level here, that's where that rack from the east side will go. And my Vanda hanger will go down to the bottom level over there. Indoors. If it is a gloomy, nasty day or days or weeks, they stay indoors because there is no point me shuffling them out, having to bring them back in. So my highlight orchids that can take direct sun goes onto this shelf right here, right by the glass, and also because they're tall. So my epidendrums, the reed stem epidendrums, they go into this corner, which I have allocated for them 
because they, I have plenty of height for them. Okay, the top guns go onto this top shelf right here and they have the blurple lights right above them. I love blurple. Normally my top guns are either in bloom or bud. Sometimes uh, they actually bloom in December, January. So I will actually have them right on the top. A, also because of their height and their size. And they will be covering and then protecting the next layer down. And you can see I've, sca I've staggered my light rods. Let me show you, I hope you can still hear me. So that's the top one, a little bit to the left. Let's go down to the next shelf. The light is in line right to the front. If we go down to the next shelf, the light is right in the middle. And if you look down to the bottom shelf, I have the light to the back. So I have staggered the access to blurple light for all my orchids that have to stay in in the winter and the gloomy days where I switch them on because the top guns can take as much as they can take. There's more going to be living on this shelf because of height and they can take as much as they can take. The smaller guns, let's say, the ones that can take direct sun, they live down here because I don't have the height but I can accommodate them and the same for the bottom shelf. Highlight orchids that can take direct sun even through glass because of how much they've been exposed during the summer, they can go down here. And as we move back, you can see again, the sun is being directed now into the space, but on a gloomy day, there's nothing here. So I've staggered my light rods according to shelf, and then I position my orchids according to light needs. For example, let's see. I'll do an update once all this is set up and they're all in their place one day. So this is my, let's just go back up. This is my top shelf and the light is in the ceiling, top guns. This is my next level up shelf and there's a light to the right here. So I can fit some tall orchids in where I can train the growths. Segway. This area becomes my blooming alley along here because the blooms will face me as the buds open. That way I switch them, turn them around as little movement as possible on gloomy days and move them so I can see them. When you get down to this shelf here, I have if you just heard my stomach, I'm sorry. I have the light rod in the middle. I have very high, let me, let me get down, okay. You see the light rods are in the middle of the rack and I have very high or tall orchids space to the left and to the right. And then I have a gap through here, through the middle between the pots. That's where I put the little ones. All the little ones are then all lined up under, directly under the light because they're not as high, but they will get direct light. Whereas the other ones will get either light from the incoming glass, from the scattered light coming from the top, which is above them, but a little bit more subdued, obviously. And then down here is where I have another row of lights for the lower shelf. And here I put my paths that can take it, or I add another row of little ones and I move the paths across where they will get some light, but not as heavy intense as the little ones who need high light. And when I say little ones, I'm talking seedlings and not the rapiculous lalias, except for maybe the two weak ones that are coming. Um, they may have to be babied indoors, but everybody else stays outside. So I play with gaps between the pots based on how I've positioned the light rods and then hope that some diffused light will pass through the other shelves where the pots are not blocking it. 
I also have another shelf here, long one, all the way down to Twiga. This is where I have all of the ones that either are in bloom, full growth, resting, whatever. They get this area. And these are shop lights. There's not blurple or anything. I just took panel lights and um, put them up for like to simulate sun, daylight. In the winter, as you can see now, the angle of the sun is already late afternoon reaching in almost to the end of the shelf. And I have about two hours in the depth of winter, if it is a sunny day, where I bring them in a little earlier. Normally my cutoff hour is 5 p.m. because it takes me an hour and a half to bring most of them back in that are coming in. And there will be a little bit of late afternoon sun in the corner here with my giraffe. So this sun will actually reach all the way to the end and then I play with those that hour and a half. On a gloomy day, I switch my lights on from eight in the morning until about six, seven in the evening and then they then I switch them off so that is what I do in winter it's a puzzle I'm playing with these racks now assuming I have residual light coming from the shop lights down to this level right here and if I have anything maybe my paths this year will go behind underneath the shelf but they get late afternoon sun and they get a lot of reflection from the white wall. One of the biggest reasons I wanted to repaint the whole house in white, because I didn't know at the time how I was going to structure a collection. So everything white gave me a lot of options. But yeah, I think I've covered everything now. Let me go back to your request again. Let me go have a look. Right, so I quickly had a look. I think I've covered everything. The question is, have I made sense? Uh, the only way I'll know is for you to tell me. But I wanted to show you, well, black eagle, a cute, huh? I just wanted to show you a space that I've created, much to the disappointment of my daughter because I took the barbecue table. <laughs> and here are my summer bloomers, and you can see the shade they're in now, but they are in super bright light without direct sun. I tried to have them in the blooming alley and when they're in bloom, I'm always so freaked out, I'm gonna miss the mark because I've already sunburned some in the past and I'm not doing that again. What happens with the summer bloomers is that normally by spring, their spikes are developing buds and we know that they develop very slowly. And it turns out that for the first couple of months in spring, my summer bloomers are actually inside on the shelves that you just saw, simply because the sun is receding out of that space, but there's still bright light. And I am not going to jeopardize moving them outside, even though the temperature now allows it at night, because I don't want bud blast. And these little climate changes, they actually will produce bud blast. So funny enough, my summer bloomers come out very, very late in the season at least until the first bud has opened and then at least I've seen the bloom and if the next bud behind it blasts because now I've moved them outside well I've seen the bloom and then it can develop new buds for the rest of the season but yeah so I've created a little space here that when permitting which is now the shade is always there but very bright light and soon they're going to go back inside because they don't like that low temperatures in the pots. And here are my, as you might know, my Rapiculus Lelias. And down here are my weak little twinkles. We'll do an update on those. But these Rapiculus Lelias, most of them are now established for outdoor living year round. Some, not so much. So, but these will be monitored and that's why I have them in a very, very bright location. A couple of weeks ago, they got late afternoon sun. Now, because of the way the, su the sun has angled lower in the sky, they don't get any direct sun at all. And eventually, let me get up slowly without sounding like a beached whale. And let's move 
slowly back to my blooming alley. These ridiculous ladies we just saw will go down onto the bottom shelf here for the winter. They are a lot more protected. If it is eight degrees over there, it's about 10 or 11 degrees Celsius over here. And they will get bright morning sun for as long as I have. One moment. This curtain down. If it is a gloomy day, but bright enough with intermittent sunshine, my orchids are outside and the curtain stays up. And then this space down here has more light. You can see there's a little bit of dappling, never mind the curtain, but that's what it looks like with the grating from the trellis. So they have like a dappled light coming through. So eventually I will move my reticulus over here. You can see I've already moved some over here because I want to keep an eye on them and see how they adapt to the conditions with having occasional sun throughout the day. So these are my little test candidates because they're strong enough because they have roots. I'm going to allow myself the luxury to watch them even though they're just new. Okay, oh, uh, maybe a long video yakety yak, jibber jabber. I wouldn't know how else to structure it, um, Joy. So I sincerely hope I've done your request justice. But you know what? The beauty of this whole platform is, if this raises any more questions, which is fully understandable, then I really, really hope that you would take advantage and fire away in the comments below because I will be absolutely happy to qualify any thought, any process or anything that I have just tried to show and explain. For anything else and anybody else who has watched this video, please know that this is what I want the future of my channel to be about about personalizing requests, about personalizing answers to any questions. If they warrant a video, five minutes, two minutes, because I need to show you something, that is what I want to do. If you have a question that just takes care of itself in a small novel as a reply to your comment, then that is also what I want to do. Either way, it is my aim that this channel becomes your channel and any questions I can answer are being addressed as a matter of priority and any subjects I would like to film and show subsequently become fill in the blank videos. So thank you so, so much for watching everybody that watched. I really appreciate it and I hope to do your time that you spend watching my videos and taking time on my channel. I hope to make your time productive and constructive. I am currently working on a concept for winter because that's another thing I would like to introduce to my channel is some fun. This hobby is magical, it's beautiful, it can be frustrating sometimes, but it's also fun. And I want to make this channel a reflection of everything that is about this orchid hobby. So for the winter months, I'm working on some things. I'm trying to construct a video, put it together to give you the ideas and some structures regarding let's have fun with this hobby. Again, thank you everybody so very, very much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Take care and stay safe. Bye.